Okay, so this is going to be a real quick um, weather update for you folks that live up around the Tulsa area. So there's been a couple of um, tornado indicated thunderstorms, but none of them had produced tornadoes for a while. Uh, there was one that had a brief one south of Tulsa, um, and then we've got one in north of Tulsa now that actually has been um, substantial as far as causing some damage. So we'll take a look at that. Uh, and so I'll cover this one for a little while. And then nothing has happened yet over central southern Oklahoma. Uh, watching for new storms down there. But for right now, uh, this basically is right around the town of Talala. So if you live in Talala, this tornado is actually passing north of you know what you call the central part of the, of the town area by about a mile and a half, uh, which is good news. But it's going to be heading up toward Watova here pretty soon between there and Jamestown. So this is the area of circulation right here. Uh, and as I said, it's extremely strong. So what that ends up being, um, whenever you do this, let's see. Let's see something here real quick. Um, the Some of the values that we have with the radar, we can look at a dual pole. And this is the cross correlation coefficient. And this little blue area indicates debris. So it's trees, you know, homes sometimes, barns, whatever it may be. So this trail has done some damage and continues to do so in this area. So you want to take it serious. You want to be in the center part of your home uh, and away from windows. And it would likely be a strong tornado. So, you know, at least probably an EF1 um, to, to see that kind of a damage uh, indication. So I just want to let you guys know what's happening up there into the northern parts of Tulsa. Um, the uh, this storm will pass north of you guys as far as Tulsa itself. So there's no threat for you in the Tulsa area. Now this other one uh, near Wagner has had a history of producing some little brief funnels. Uh, one last one known was up around Coweta. Didn't touch down or anything. So it's a weak thunderstorm. So it's not a tornadic thunderstorm, but at times it's had tornado warnings on it. It just didn't produce anything. So I wasn't really too worried about it. A while back around Okmulgee, around Preston, just north of there, there was a couple of sightings of what we call a little rope tornado, a little finger-like thing, but again, didn't do anything, didn't do any damage, and it quickly lifted. So it really wasn't worth um, covering on that one because it wasn't affecting anyone. But it's still a good severe thunderstorm with a lot of hail, but the one here north of Tulsa is the one that's really causing trouble. In this is north of Ulaga, heading to the east-northeast, um, you know, eventually between uh, Nawada and, uh, New let's see, actually, you know, it probably still stay uh, just south of Watova. So, I mean, you're going to get the hail in, in uh, Nawada from this, but you won't get any of the wind um, associated with the circulation. Uh, let me look here with time. The circulation has actually continued to diminish a bit. So if I go back in time, four or five frames, it looked really strong here, but it was mainly over open area. Um, and then now that it's coming into more populated regions, it's weakening quite a bit, which is really good to see. So that's what we like to see. We like to see the trend of these things ramp down once they go into a populated region. So if I take the radar off, you can see the circulation that we pinpoint in the group of trees over here is just over open farmland. Uh, and that's the best place for a tornado telling you. So can we get kind of lucky sometimes on these things is Oklahoma is a very big state and you end up with a lot of real estate um, and a lot of it looks like this which is just open farmland. So that is a good news at least with this particular tornado because as I said we, we've got a debris signature with it which means these trees are likely it. Uh, now there are some little small looks like farm communities right here so it may have impacted those so let's hope not. Hope everybody there was safe uh, but uh, as far as um, by far and large, most of this is over open kind of a grass and plain area. So that is the latest look at northern Tulsa as far as that particular thunderstorm. So that uh, has become rain wrapped. I won't even be able to see it. Um, and it is again, it's still producing a tornado right now. Uh, let's see. So approaching Highway 189, by the way, uh, is what, excuse me, 169 out of Talala. And I'll do a storm track on this for you as well. Let's see here. So, the Lue is the only one's going to come up here in the next uh, really 30, uh, 25 to 30 minutes. That's the only other major town in its path. So, again, the good news is it's kind of over an area that's not nearly as uh, densely populated. So, um, you know, sometimes you look for the highlight in these things, and that's definitely one of them. So the wording on this, by the way, uh, let's see, it's a warning. 
Uh, let's see, confirmed a large and extremely dangerous tornado located just west of Talala, moving northeast at 30. Uh, so again, if you're in the path, take shelter. Uh, again, coming up right along 169. So these are some of the locations near the path. Uh, Nawada, of course, Ulaga, Nulue, uh, Chelsea, Talala, and Watova. So uh, that's the latest on that particular tornado warning. So this has actually been the only tornado warning uh, that's actually verified into a large tornado. We had that uh, smaller tornado down in southern Oklahoma, southwest of Ada, and we've had a, a few other tornado warnings, uh, but so far those two are the ones you know that have gotten the attention, and rightfully so. So it looks like the last scan, the winds have picked up just a little bit more. So let's see, I got inbound winds close to 70 miles per hour, and uh, outbound at 55. So that puts it at a probability of an EF1, 68%, and maybe even an EF2 uh, tornado. So kind of in between those two, uh, which is what the uh, algorithms are indicating with the strength and speed of uh, this particular circulation and the height and, and the database and all that stuff. So uh, again, it's a significant tornado, and that's up here north of Tulsa. So you guys need to be in your shelter, lowest uh, floor, away from all windows and outside walls uh, until the storm passes you by. So it'll be coming pretty close to Watova. By the way, the current location of it uh, is going to be south uh, 4100. So again, we're about a mile west of the interstate. Uh, also coming in south of the county line, this is also East Road. Uh, was it 0290, I think it was. Uh, yeah, 0290. So that's the intersection where this particular tornado is located. Uh, again, pretty soon it'll be up near the town of Watova, probably passing just shy of here to the south. So, guys, you need to be in your shelters for that, and this will be moving through here the next few minutes. Now, remember, even EF1 or even EF2 tornadoes can be survived very well with adequate shelter. Now, not in a mobile home situation, but in an adequate shelter, strong, sturdy, well-built home with a good frame foundation, for example. Okay, look at the situation here. It looks like things are weakening again, and the debris signature has diminished quite a bit meaning that uh, it's either run out of things to pick up or it's no longer as strong as it was and or even weakening to where it's lifting. So any, either way, all three of those is good news. So even the what we call the, the rotation track, uh, if you can see here the bright colors on the map, as I go through time, see how they disappear? So that's again, that's a good sign. It just means that uh, the storm has weakened quite a bit. And once these things kind of get rain wrapped, like this one has, the circulation's way back here, and you get all this other rain that's now messing up the inflow, uh, it's going to kill it off anyway. So it was just a matter of time. So it was kind of a short lived situation, but it was very potent. Well, again, it was over this open farmland. So that's what it looks right now north of uh, Tulsa, around Talala. So uh, what's going to happen here, this particular uh, wave in northeast Oklahoma will continue to move out and then we're going to get new waves that move in to take its place later on in the evening. Okay, looks like we got a new warning issued for this guy here around Maisie. Uh, let's see. Yeah, we do have like a little rotation signature here coming up, just started, this just this frame. So it uh, looks like they pulled the trigger. So that was a good call. So we'll try a warning issued for this one. So we'll see if it ramps up. But uh, this will be uh, approaching, let's see right now, State Highway 69 and 2, coming in from the west about a mile and a half, running right along East Road 690. Uh, so again, coming up close to um, just north of Wagner. All right, and then we got one around Tahlequah. Looks like starting to get a little hook echo with it as it kind of comes in toward the uh, eastern fringe of the state so very broad circulation nothing tight yet weather service is watching that one so these are our situational storms up here in northern Oklahoma this one up here in Coffeyville looks like they've got a warning triggered for that one um, let's see 
weak circulation on the radar, but it's also detecting around 3,700 feet. Uh, looks like they've got a purple polygon, which typically means there's a tornado sighted. So uh, it doesn't say that here in the wording, but um, it says radar confirmed tornado. So uh, again, this is going to be come up in southern Kansas. If you were to live around uh, Edna, this particular storm is heading toward your direction. All right. Well, of course, it's off and on storms here in the Oklahoma City metro. Uh, that hasn't changed. If you look down here, uh, got a cluster of thunderstorms here on the west side of town, back out toward Binger, Chickasha, Tuttle. These are all moving kind of a north, just slight drift to the northeast. You're going to get some brief heavy rain with them, occasional small hail with them. Uh, nothing so far is, is anything of concern here in southern Oklahoma. If you look way down here across the river, we have some new thunderstorms coming on in from northwest Texas. So we'll see what happens with these guys as they enter into our environment. So we still have the potential for some traumatic development here for this uh, later this afternoon here in this evening over southern Oklahoma. So we'll have to keep a close eye on that kind of stuff. All right, so let me see here back in the stuff up here in northern Oklahoma. Okay, so this circulation center is coming up 4120 road. This is uh, south southwest of Nawada and northwest of Watoba. Uh, so that's where that center location is located for that particular tornado. Where was that other one here in Wagner? So north of Wagner, very broad. Um, I doubt there's anything on the ground at this point in time. County Line Road and Highway 69 south of Maisie moving to the northeast. So uh, heading up eventually toward Locust Grove. So you need to be in your shelters by the way if you're in the path of either one of those. Uh, and looks like they did pull the tornado warning for that one we looked at earlier with the broad rotation in eastern Oklahoma and uh, Tahlequah. So again, that's also really broad. So I don't think there'll be a tornado with that one for right now. It's too broad. But uh, if it does uh, increase and tighten up, then that would uh, produce a tornado out of that given the environment. All right, let me do a couple of storm tracks from, for these. So this is going to be affecting Westville about 349. Uh, for this storm over here, um, north of Wagner. Uh, the one down here in Tahlequah, looks like that one's going to be, uh, let's see, well, that was Westville, sorry, 349. And then the one north of there, let's get off of that one. That one's got Locust Grove coming up in the next 20, 30 minutes. And then, of course, you got the one that's already going through the water right now. We've already talked about that one around Louis. Okay, so that's what we got right now in northeast Oklahoma. Uh, northwest Oklahoma, just a cluster of showers and storms and some probably some hail thrown in from time to time. Uh, but nothing tornadic. You're, you're well in the cold air. So when you're behind the cold front boundary, you don't have to worry about tornadoes. It's everybody that's either along the boundary or south and east of it. And right now that boundary runs through the Oklahoma City metro area and then stretches up I-44 corridor just west of Tulsa. So that's why the Tulsa area has the uh, tornado potential there. Okay. So with me, you're going to get some downtime while I check 10 different sources and um, look at some new stuff. Because a lot of times, once I say it, there's no point in repeating it over and over and over. Uh, so for example, the one up here, Watova, has already diminished now. So that particular train we talked about getting rain wrap, it's gone. So that's good news because it was just about to approach Highway 169. So I don't see anything left on the radar. There's no debris signature. So... That storm is dead. That's what we like to see. All right, so that trail is over with. The trail warning continues. Um, as a precautionary, you can stay in your shelters, but the good news is I have for you right now is that the old circulation is gone, so you'd have to have a new circulation form 
uh, and right now that's not occurring. So we'll, we'll watch it though and see. Uh, meanwhile, this other one up here, like I said, in Ed, coming up toward Edna, just now moving out of the state, pretty much almost across the state lines, about a mile south of the state border. Uh, about uh, five miles, six miles east of Coffeeville, and the the velocity data with that is pretty pathetic. So, um, unless somebody, unless the storm tracker has reported a funnel or something, I just don't think there's be much there to talk about. So um, that's good news there. Okay, so we'll go back down this one here. Uh, let's see, coming up toward eventually Murphy and see what the replay tee looks like. That, so nope, still broad, so doubtful that's got a tornado with it. But uh, anytime you get a tornado warning, you still need to take shelter. Uh, I'm just letting you know that there's not an actual tornado within it. Uh, but the warnings are issued as a potential that a tornado can develop at any moment. Uh, I'm just going to tell you in, in what we call now casting, which means I'm going to tell you right now if there's one, or if there's not one, or if there's going to be one, or if it's going to die out, uh, to give you more of a peace of mind so you actually have more information. Down here east of that, this is that mess we looked at. They had a broad rotation signature with it. Still does. It's not tight. Therefore, I don't think it's going to produce a tornado at this point in time. Uh, but it is rotating quite a bit. We're at about 2,900 feet, so we should get a good view of it. Uh, let's see. Okay, so that takes care of the tornado warnings in the state. Um, so that's what I've got for you right now. Okay, so I'm going to put. Um, I'm going to pull up another image here. Let me see. I'm just going to check to make sure you guys' the stream's working and all that. So I posted the video of the drone footage that, that a storm chaser took of that tornado down near Ada. Uh, very impressive, but you can see how it was over some open land, which was really good to see. Uh, let's see. Okay. No, it's all good. All right, I had, a, I had a friend of mine text me and says, hey, the, the image on my phone is for the maps and stuff is real fuzzy. So if you're having um, issues where the maps and stuff I show you isn't clear, it's because your internet connection is either poor or you don't have your settings to be auto. You have them on low, maybe to save bandwidth or data, uh, on whatever you're watching via your computer or your phone. So you can always hit the gear icon and make it go 720p so it's HD for you. And then you can take that signal and you can broadcast it from your phone. You can mirror cast it, Chromecast it, Apple AirPlay it, whatever you want to do to your TV if you want to watch it big screen in HD. So some several ideas to, to get this so you don't have to stare at a little phone the whole time or a tablet. Just some other options depending on where you are, especially if you're at home. Um, let's see. Okay, so I just want to check the stream. It looked good. Let's see. Now, also, let me make sure it's also working on this other page. So I'm, I'm broadcasting actually in three locations. So I'm broadcasting on my YouTube channel, which goes through my website, AaronTotalWeather.com, and also through my weather app, AT's Weather to Go. Broadcasting on my Facebook Live, the, the big main page, and on my Facebook Patreon closed group page. So for my patrons, they're getting the broadcast too. So I've got it going three different ways to try to reach as many of you as possible. And the reason for that is sometimes Facebook doesn't notify you whenever I go live. Um, so it's good to kind of get multiple notifications. So now the other issue i got to remind you is, is that I do not cover just regular thunderstorms. I only cover uh, tornadic ones. So if we've got some heavy rain in the metro, um, I'm probably not going to cover it unless it's some monumental flooding event, which, you know, we, we've got flash flooding in the forecast for this event, so that could happen. But outside of that interest, um, you know, we're really significant, um, you know, we're talking grapefruit baseball size hailstorm. I typically just cover uh, traumatic thunderstorms, uh, just so just you're aware. Okay, so let me, um, yeah, let me do something real quick. Hold on. I, I got to do a lot of house cleaning, so I basically have to uh, do like 10 things at once. Okay. 
Okay. All right. So one of the issues I had earlier, when I was trying to go live earlier, was I had a couple issues. One was internet connectivity. Um, for whatever reason, it wasn't where it was earlier this morning. So I had to deal with that. And then my uh, closed captioning um, option um, didn't work for some reason. So I had to work on that. And tech support is MIA. So that was irritating me. <laughs> I have no idea how irritated I was. So, you know, it's Murphy's Law. When, when everything's supposed to go right, it goes wrong. And I, I, don't, I don't handle that well <laughs> when it's something like this. So I'm just frustrated. Okay, so let me... Um, Let's do this. Okay, so I'm gonna get you back here so you can see what I'm going, what I'm doing, what's, what I got going on. Where is my, okay, here it is. So we're gonna look at a couple of things here so I can get you up to speed on the environment, including myself, because I've, I've been kind of preoccupied with a bunch of other things. So what we're gonna take a look at is the situation it looks like here over Southern Oklahoma as far as what types of storms we're gonna see and if we're still in kind of what we call the tornado zone, so to speak. So I'm just gonna take one sample here. All right, so what we're looking at, and I've used this on all my live coverage. Now, I have yet to see it pan out this spring, but I keep using because it's, it's all we got. So basically it takes a look at all the databases from all the tornadoes, given these similar situations to see, okay, are we gonna see one yes or no? So these are the red bars left and right, okay? That's what our database shows in each of these categories. These are all severe weather parameter categories. The vertical bar is where we are currently. So check, 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 and this is an outlier, but it's okay because it's on, the, it's on the, the, the worst inside. So in other words, as far as tornadoes go, the atmosphere says we should be seeing tornadoes today. All right, well, we got them in northeast Oklahoma. It's kind of a no-brainer. Right now, I've got it, you know, looking at southern Oklahoma. Now, I'm going to look at significant tornadoes, which is the stronger ones. We're talking EF2, EF3. Uh, let's see. We do hit one, two, three. An outlier here, a little low on the shear, uh, a little low in the helicity, and that one's okay. So we don't quite have all the ingredients for a significant tornado yet, but right now that's what the atmosphere looks like here over uh, southern Oklahoma. So that's why we're kind of watching this area closely for new development. And that's what I was saying earlier in the, in the you may have seen a post I had, I said waiting for round two to develop because that's what I was talking about. So we're waiting kind of for round two to kind of get going in this region. And the models were all over the place as far as how things were going to evolve today. I had warned you, they're very messy. In this type of situation, they cannot resolve. It, it's too chaotic because once you don't have a cap in place and things just develop willy-nilly, uh, that becomes an issue. So let me see here. Probability of zero tornado. We're in the, here, I'll blow this up for you. So the probability in EF uh, zero tornado is in the 30 to 40 percentile uh, range, which is actually significant when you're looking at um, probabilities, by the way. The probability for an EF2 um, category is only 10 percent. So it kind of goes to show you that the atmosphere, remember, I looked, showed you had a few missing parameters for EF2s. So that's what I'm saying. The atmosphere is great for EF0 and EF1. It's just harder to get one that would be slightly stronger than that. So um, even up north, that one we saw north of Tulsa, it, you know, the, the radar showed it was probably an EF1, um, possibly a weak EF2. So that kind of jives so far with what we're seeing in the setup from the atmosphere itself, what it's capable of doing. So again, this is more of a science-based stuff, and I tell you this just so you'll understand what's happening and why and, and where. And you can see all these numbers, how they're kind of correlated across the, if you were to draw a line over you know, I-44 corridor, you know, it's up here, you're fine, no problems. You know, all the action is going to be, you know, south and east of that boundary. Okay, so that was one thing I wanted to show you. Uh, let me see what else do I want to do. Um, let's do this. Do I want to do that? No. I think I want to do it this way. All 
All right, so um, one of the somewhat helpful things is for today is that we have no breaks in the cloud cover. In other words, it's pretty much mostly cloudy all over. And with that, you're going to get some, you know, a little bit on the tamer side of instability. Now, we'll have plenty just because we have all these high dew point values coming in. But without the sun to really act on it, uh, it keeps the atmosphere from being extremely volatile. Now, the other issue is because we don't have a cap in place, really. It's extremely weak. If you have an extremely weak cap, then that does not allow um, you know, more sun because it allows too much garbage stuff to bubble up and keep cooling things down with more rain. So the atmosphere is in a really weird state today. And it's going to, and actually this is really good because it kind of helps to limit the tornado threat to a degree because it's, it's too murky, uh, it's too grunge, shall we call it. Uh, so, all right, where'd that go? Okay. <laughs> okay. All right, let me see what else I want to show you. Uh, let's see if this has been updated. And then let me do this as well. All right, so the Storm Prediction Center, by the way, just so you know, uh, continues the risk here over uh, the kind of the orange shading. They didn't go moderate, they kept it enhanced. Uh, and that's just because of the uncertainty in so much going on. Now, if you notice though, like I told you last night and even this morning, kind of the hot spot here is in southern Oklahoma as far as the tornado potential goes and that's why they have that hashed area so a little bit you know greater than 10 percent in that ring of seeing a tornado so it does come up just into the metro basically kind of right up along that that frontal boundary and so that's what's going on there all right so uh, soundings okay we the National Weather Service launched another sounding and I want to see how strong the cap was but that data hasn't been posted yet. They launched it, I think, at three. So I may not get it until about four. I think it takes about an hour to come through. So, okay, so back to um, this deal here. And again, uh, Northeast Oklahoma right now is where all the action is as far as anything severe is concerned. So let's take a look here. Uh, the one up around Murphy, and we had that warning for you. And for a while there, there was nothing uh, imminent at the point in time. Still nothing on radar, which indicates anything of concern. Uh, let's see. Uh, one character claims he saw a funnel cloud five minutes ago. And I'd say it's unverified because I don't know what he's looking at. There ain't nothing there. But, you know, he may have thought he saw something scud. But not all of these chase reports will be worth their weight in gold. So you kind of have to... Use them as a grain of salt. Now this one, uh, remember it was very broad earlier on, and it still really is. It still hasn't tightened up at all. That's good. So mm -hmm. rotation track is fairly weak. Uh, no other signature as far as anything tornadic. Uh, the warning though continues. So still, this is west of Christie. So heading up toward, um, it's going to pass north of Westville. I think we remember that had that storm track on there. So it'll pass north of West uh, Westville, probably, but just south of Watts by about. Mm, two miles. Uh, so we'll see. Looks like it's it may be trying to tighten up a little bit more in this area. So that would be your developing tornado should that happen. Uh, but at this point so far it has not done so. Uh, back up here in northern Oklahoma, uh, this is what's left of that one particular storm. And there's just nothing with it. So I'm not sure why the warning continues. Let me read this. Uh, a tornado radar indicator rotation capable of producing a tornado. Okay, so they're just going to hang on to the hang on to the the wording on it as a just in case, because uh, yeah, the circulation has been long gone for a while. So I guess in case another one spins up. So uh, in this type of atmosphere. Okay, so those are the three uh, three storms that we have as far as anything potentially tornadic. Uh, we've got one up here in southwest Missouri. Uh, this guy's over here east of Anderson, southwest of Stella. Uh, that's moving off to the northeast toward Wheaton, so you want to be in your shelters for that one. That's a tornado-producing thunderstorm. 
The one here in southern Kansas, uh, that thing weakened quite a bit as it moved over, but they're still keeping the warning with it for right now. I don't see any new reports on that. Uh, and then that's it to see. Uh, we do have a new mesoscale discussion. Uh, that's going to be difficult to read there, so I'm going to go here to read it. All right, it's this little guy here. By the way, Dallas is still out of the gun for some severe storms. Strong mass response with gusty winds. Meso low near boundary, possible initiation zone. Okay, that well, extends from Oklahoma City southwestward toward Lawton. So let's see, recent trends suggest possible storm. Uh, initiation across southwest Oklahoma, the corridor of tornado and damaging wind threat along the front. Latest surface OBS, including Oklahoma Mesonet, show deepening or low developing near the stationary front centered over Caddo County. Service observation indicate gusty southeast winds blowing toward the low. Um, substantial low level moisture exists along this boundary from northwest Texas into central Oklahoma. Radar trends show more showers and storms. Uh, the VAD wind profile shows over 300 meters per second squared of storm relative helicity while the latest objective analysis also shows substantial surface vorticity in place near the front. Bottom line is there's a lot of shear returning for these storms to feed off of. Therefore, any storm that develops may proceed northeast nearly parallel to the front, and if they do, could pose a tornado threat along with damaging winds as they grow upscale into an MCS, in other words, a squall line. So what they're saying is there should be a few more of these types of storms developing uh, and then going into a squall line type situation later on this evening. But for the next few hours at least having that potential. Okay. So now you guys kind of know the big picture of what's happening, um, the reasons why, all that stuff. Let's see. Oh, good, they did get that up in, sounding in. Okay, so this sounding just came in, uh, has absolutely no cap at all. It's completely cap. In other words, this little red line is the temperature line, and if there was a cap, it would be over here to the right of this blue line, and it's not. So that means all the atmosphere needs is a little push in any direction from anything, and you're going to keep getting thunderstorms to go. We already talked about there being plenty of shear with that discussion and a lot of other parameters we looked at for severe weather, which we showed you on that other site a little while ago. All right, so basically it all says we've got severe storms to deal with for the next few hours is what that tells me. All right, so all right, let me get back into this stuff. Let's see what's going on here. Okay, so the severe thunderstorm uh, warning here for the western parts of Oklahoma City is going to have your typical one inch size hail and 60 mile per hour winds verbiage in it. Let's see. Otherwise, there's the good news is I have not seen any ridiculous hail, so um, I'm liking that. So it's just a garden variety thunderstorm here in Oklahoma City. So nothing to worry about at this point in time. The I want to look at to where the uh, boundary is though for interaction that is so light all right I'm going to go back over here let's see what we do let's do this one
Okay, split this up so you can get one panel. Okay, so where is the boundary? Give me a second here. Uh, all right, this is it right here. Okay, so the little cold front boundary that we talked about is basically doing this little guy here. So it's snaking through um, the central part of the metro, I-40 corridor, then, then goes back up toward Spencer, and then comes on down south of there toward uh, Tuttle, north of Bridge Creek. So this is the boundary we talked about you had to be careful of. So any, any storm that can get on that boundary, that is where you can get a potential tornado to develop. And right now, all these storms here on the west side of the metro are all north of the boundary. So they shouldn't have any, any ability to produce a tornado um, because of that fact. This one down here south in Grady, it might eventually try to, you know, it'll, it'll cross over that boundary. So it had to be far more mature than it is now to kind of really anchor onto it. So we'll see what it does. We're gonna watch it. So weather service looks like uh, they're going to be issuing a trade warning for the Tillman storm coming over the Red River. So let's jump on down there. And so for real quick here, uh, last look at Tulsa. Again, I don't see anything that's crazy at this point in time, you guys up here. The, the only storm really left any rotation is too broad heading up toward Watts. I mean, stay in your shelters, but otherwise I just haven't seen any trails out here, in here in a long time. So. Uh, I think you guys are pretty much wrapping up your first round and you're going to have to wait and see what happens on round two as we head into the evening. So that one's loading. Go back and look at this. So you're like, hey, you know, how come all these storms look like this? You know, which is almost our little kidney bean with our little hooks attached to them. Well, that's because the shear is conducive for that. And let me, for this guy right here. So basically the, the winds come out of the southeast at the surface and then they turn to the south, southwest, 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 and then eventually up here there's missing data but they'll be more westerly. So what that means is that it's like a corkscrew, just kind of turns with height. So as those winds turn, that allows the storms to turn and that gives them that appendage, that, you, that, that look that you see on the radar doesn't mean that they're all gonna produce a tornado. Um, it just means that's just the reason why they look that way. So, uh, but like I said, it had to be anchored on the boundary or be in an environment uh, by themselves to really wanna produce a tornado. And if they're back in the cold air, they typically do not. But there's a severe thunderstorm warning for this little cluster though for that alone. But I'm not concerned about as far as tornado goes right now. And uh, you know, hail would be the, if they start actually getting stronger, it'd eventually be some hail. This part right here probably has a little bit of hail in it, west of Tuttle. Um, maybe this little guy right here, this little red, little pink spot hot highlighted there. So even even these storms don't have a whole lot of hail with them. All right, so um, now this thing's loaded. Let's go back down here and look at uh, the tornado worn storm in southern Oklahoma, crossing over the Red River. Okay, so we're down here west of Grandfield. This is south of Frederick. Um, we're actually over in Texas at this point, halfway through around Electra. So there's your storms down there. This guy here, uh, he's got very broad rotation, which I'm not impressed with. No indications of any um, tornado signatures or anything like that, which is good. So I just I think I have a feeling we're just gonna have a lot of these tornado warnings issued today as a precautionary. Um, measure just because the atmosphere as you saw like I showed you is conducive for that and so it wouldn't take long for a tornado to happen so I think anytime we see a storm that's going to have rotation in it you're going to get a tornado warning so I need you I need you to understand that so you have some under um, realization that it doesn't guarantee you're going to see a tornado all right just because you have a warning does not necessarily mean that and we'll look at them case by case but because of what I just told you with the environment the way it is that's the reason why the weather service is going to issue those. It's just a precautionary measure. Um, and they normally issue anyway when a storm, you know, looks like it, it may produce a tornado. So it's, it's not out of the question. It's just you're going to get a lot of those in this type of an environment. But you're going to get very few tornadoes. I, I think that's, what I, that's the message I'm trying to, to relate.
Yeah, so even this one, I don't, I don't foresee an imminent uh, tornado threat right now. But uh, you know, we'll watch it and see what happens. Let me do that right there. So, and it, it looks, the storm looks really garbagey anyway. So it may just take some more time to um, get going. There are other storms there in northwest Texas trying to bubble up. And then down in Dallas, way west of Dallas, Mineral Wells, some storms down there. Some down there around Meridian, Grand, uh, Granbury. So those moving into Dallas. So Dallas is also under tornado uh, watch today, uh, this evening. So that's a possibility down there as well. All right, let's go back on into town. Look at these guys again. So if you live... And Edmond, you know, woo, you got some rain. Now the bad part is we've had a lot of rain. Um, let's see, the hail size is in here. Uh, is it even worth talking about? No. Uh, let's see, what about down here in Yukon? Uh, no. Let's see, what about down here in Tuttle? One inch size hail. Okay, so finally got something that actually would qualify as a severe thunderstorm. So the hail is very marginal in um, size, so it's not a big deal. All right, let me try out the radar though, just to make sure. That was with uh, Tidwar. We'll go with the 88D, just in case this algorithm have a slightly different take on it. That's loading. I'm multitasking. Extreme meso cell detected. Severe hail detected. Okay. All right. So let me see if the hail's changing. This one, 1.4 inch. Um, all right. Way to get specific. Let's see. What about up here? 1.36 inches. Okay. <laughs> all right, algorithms. You can tell a bunch of nerdy scientists did this. <laughs> Why not just go 1.3697? Uh, uh, it probably did, it just probably truncates it. All right, so anyway, that's just me goofing. But um, other otherwise, it's got some hail. Looks like it's starting to pick up a little bit in the size. So it's at least got an inch size diameter hail. Um, it may get a little bit larger. We'll see. Let me, let's see, the boundary on the tail end of this. So I've kind of lost it in the noise, but the boundary was sitting something like this, I believe. So if that's the case, we'll watch right here in Tuttle to see if the tail end of this boundary is pulled into that storm a little bit. But if the storm keeps moving too far north, it'll get away from the boundary and then it's, and then it's lost its chance to do anything ominous other than a little bit of hail. I'm totally fine with that, by the way. Okay, so let me... Um, Oh, you know what? Hold on a second. Let me do something else. Uh, I want to go here. Dun, dun, dun. Right. Come on, Aaron. Speak or type. Broadcasting live. So basically what I'm doing is um, telling everyone that has my weather app, AT's Weather To Go, that I'm broadcasting live. Of course I did this earlier and they didn't work out so well because of some technical difficulties, but we got those ironed out. All right, so basically that's, that's how I do it. So all of you guys are represented by groups of just icons. So I don't know who you are. I just know that you're using my app and this is your location. So for example, if you live in this path of a tornado, I can literally zoom into your home and say, hey, if you're not paying attention, like there's a tornado warning you know, coming right for you. This is what I can do on the back end. I just sometimes don't have enough time to do everything, but this is one of those things I can do. So this just goes out to all the, the apps that I have. Broadcasting live now. 
Okay, so if you got my app, you're gonna get a notification here in a second, and that's how that happens. So now you now you see on the back end how I can send you messages and why it's important that you have those turned on, so you can get those. Okay, so back to uh, what's happening here in the metro. See if anything's changed with this guy. No. And so, for example, let's say you know you're at a big sporting event, you know, Thunder Game or whatever, and there's a tornado coming into downtown. I can always you know, highlight that area and then uh, tell you what's coming. All right, so just, you know, like I said, just thunderstorms here in Oklahoma City right now. Not a big deal. Uh, I will go upstairs. That's what I meant to do earlier. I wanted to see um, potential hail in this thing. Let's see, let's do this. I'm going to go up on the core. All right, so there's a hail core good about... Um, almost 30,000 feet. So we probably got some golf balls growing up there. Uh, so yeah, the hail is getting a little bit bigger. The storm itself is about 50,000 feet tall. Um, and that's the one, that's this little spot here around Mustang. So that that's around the uh, 44th Street Southwest and intersection of Chuck Hall Road. So my app says uh, threat is medium for the potential tornado situation here on this Tuttle storm. And uh, we'll see. We'll see what it does with any boundary interactions. Okay, I got way too many messages. So I just check in. So on my app, whenever that safety net alert comes through, it'll, it'll like if it says danger storm approaching, it'll give you a, a BTI rating. Mine says a 4.8. So basically anything in the mid range from like a three to a five, you just basically just pay attention. Um, once it's over a five, you really need to be having your game plan in order. Uh, it, like five to six. If it's a seven, I'd go ahead and start heading to the shelters. If it's in eight, nine, or ten, especially the nine or ten, it pretty much means the tornado is imminent and knocking on your door. So that's kind of how you can use that um, number system to kind of get you mentally prepared. Because it's going to give you a lot of lead time typically uh, before that threat arrives. Because that's what it's designed to do. So again, if you don't have it, it's called AT's Weather to Go. Okay, so let me look again at some of the wind, wind fields in this. Mm, no. What happened to that boundary? I'm going to have to go find it on this one because it's lost. It is so hard to find these things in this environment. Okay, there it is right there. So it snakes down through here. I think it's going to be down here on Pocasset. Okay, I gotta change that rain. <laughs> hey, we just crossed the river on Highway 4, just south of the Mustang. Um, we're crossing the boundary right now uh, on this storm. It's trying to latch on as we speak. Okay, I was just looking at that on the radar, so I'm glad you got a visual. Um, when you guys start to stream, just let me know. Okay, so that was my Storm Chaser guys. So they're on that Mustang Storm um, to see if something happens along and near the boundary. So this is the area we're watching. Is basically from really the, the boundary kind of snakes in like this and then snakes in like this. So the issue is this storm has a better shot at seeing something, but it's moving north, you know, away from the boundary. This one is also moving north away from the boundary. Um, so they really need to stay pretty close to it to be able to do something um, in theory. If it gets too far north, it's back in the colder air, and it's just not as conducive. So that's why we kind of have to watch um, 
this region to see if anything occurs. All right, so uh, like I said, if you haven't had a chance, uh, feel free to tell your friends and family that there's another alternate um, way to get severe weather coverage here in Oklahoma City that's completely different than what the TV stations will provide as far as the anxiety aspect of it. They all do a great job as far as finding things, you know, with the high tech stuff. I get all that, that's great. But a lot of times um, it comes at a cost of just saying a lot of things that either aren't true or embellishing and we don't need any of that in the, in the world of science. So I strip all that out and I just show you what's actually happening um, and then we walk you through it. So it's, it's a, a it's more of a performance versus a production. That's kind of how I like to describe it. Um, you're watching you know, a performer perform, and then you can watch a circus. <laughs> if you want the circus, go for it. I'm, you know, I'm not gonna hate on you. Uh, if you'd rather have the performance, <laughs> and go, that was a nice performance, and I'm nice and calm, uh, then I'm your guy. Uh, but if you want the circus animals and watch the zoo go loose, hey, have a, um, there's good information in there, but it just comes out of cost sometimes. All right, so increased circulation southwest of Loveland. So those guys are still watching those storms way down south along the Red River. Um, let's see, so what's going on with those? Zip on down. Um, this is got in here near Grantfield, so uh, in Loveland. So again, if you're in this region, go ahead and, and uh, stay still stay in your trail shelters for this until it gets to uh, Chattanooga. That's the path it's going to take. Let me just uh, track on that one because I don't think I've done that one yet. Zip on down here real quick. Okay, get off of there. Well, that gave me an ETA of nobody. Well, there you go. Nobody's in the path of this. <laughs> it happens sometimes when it's over open farmland. Um, but anyway, so there you go. All right, so that's the storm down there in southwest Oklahoma. No, no big communities involved in here. Uh, but it will be coming up through Highway 36 that runs north and south out of Chattanooga here in a little bit. So. There you go. But this radar indicated, uh, like I said, it's been some weaker rotation with that. Hasn't been anything too crazy. Uh, I'll even switch radar sites. We'll get a really good close up view of the one that's just to its west. Let's see. And we'll see if uh, it looks any better than it did before. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, so the radar um, signature here, the velocity data rather, the couplet is much stronger than it was before. Okay, so it has picked up a little bit of intensity. So, um, you know, when that tornado warning first came out, there wasn't anything to it. And then what it's been probably 10 minutes and then things are looking better. So that's good though, it gives uh, people a lot of time to prepare and that's what they need. Okay, so that's going with that. Uh, let's see what else. Oh, well, how about that? After we just discussed this, uh, Storm Prediction Center is going to upgrade to a moderate uh, risk of severe weather based on the new sounding data that we looked at, which showed no cap at all. Uh, let's see. Plus, they did a sounding in southwest Oklahoma. Ah, I was unaware of that. These soundings show an uncapped environment. Yeah, we talked about that with strong low level photographs. So in other words, good shear. Yeah, I talked about that. Environment downstream. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, well, there you go. I think they're gonna see um, uh, enough tornadoes uh, to issue a moderate risk. So let me go back to that. I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, so there it is. I've got it on this map now. So here you go. Let me put the cities on here. Okay, so in this particular case, uh, it does include Tulsa, of course. Comes up probably just east of uh, Stillwater and then comes right through Oklahoma City, right down 44, all the way to Lawton, back down toward Ardmore, then McAllister, then Fort Smith, and then back into southwestern uh, Missouri. So that's the moderate risk zone. So that'll be the highest zone where they think uh, looks like tornadoes will be for this evening. Uh, if you look at the tornado hatched, remember it was black earlier with yellow, they've now gone red. Um, so that's a 15% greater uh, probability of seeing a tornado within 25 miles of a point. 
So when you see that, you're thinking, well, it's only 15% chance of seeing the tornado. And it's true. There's a very low percentage. So do the math. That means there's an 85% chance you won't see a thing. And that's that's not just your area. That's within 25 miles of you. So this is kind of statistical probability, putting it into perspective so you understand it's not going to be, you know, tornadoes all over the place. Uh, let me see what their discussion was. An upgrade of moderate is being issued based on, oh, I already read all that. Uh, numerous tornado cell, numerous tornadic supercells across northwest Oklahoma. Uh, I think they misspoke. I think they meant to say northeast Oklahoma. Uh, but anyway, numerous tornado uh, tornadic supercells across northeast Oklahoma, southwest Missouri, and northwest Arkansas also warrant the upgrade. All right, so somebody will fix that probably, or maybe not. All right, then they had the previous update, which. Nothing new there to add. Okay, so that's I'm done with that. Uh, where am I going? Okay, so um, like I said, we'll watch the storm down here in Grandfield. So just stay in your shelters if you live there in southwest Oklahoma for that one. Uh, there's it looks like a couple of storm chasers around here that are watching it. So I'm sure if, if something looks good, they're gonna chime in with the report. So we'll go back up here to Oklahoma City, uh, the Mustang storm. So like we said, that one kind of kept moving north away from the boundary. This tail end one, which is around Placacid earlier, uh, it's now moving up toward Tuttle, so it's still in that boundary region, and looks like it's got a little uh, baby circulation feature there on the end. Eh, well, maybe, it could be just some artifact. Yeah. So we'll see if anything happens out of that. Uh, otherwise, the storm here in Oklahoma City itself is a heavy rainmaker, that's it. Uh, there's not even really any significant hail uh, that's bigger than an inch in diameter. So it's still on the uh, marginal risk as far as severe hail size goes. So in other words, it's not grapefruit or baseballs or even golf balls. It's, you know, dimes, nickels, pennies, that kind of deal. Probably a quarter every now and then. Um, all right, so the weather service said the Circulation near Loveland's already weakened, so that one's already gone kaput. But it may strengthen again, so I'm sure they'll keep the warning going. Let me zip up here in northern Oklahoma. Um, that one's moved out into Arkansas, and then we've got a new one up here in far northeast. Let's take a look at that one. So basically, if you guys are watching and you're going, okay, so what's the deal, Aaron? Well, pull up a chair because it's going to be a while. Um, it's, it's a long day, all right? That first wave, um, you know, started early around lunchtime and it quickly moved away. And the second wave is, is going to be hanging with us through about midnight. Um, so, and I showed you the area that's under the gun. So, like I said, it's going to be a long night. Okay, so up here in northern Oklahoma, uh, we've got here broad circulation. Um, that's not impressive. That's good. If I say it's not impressive, that, that means that's code for that's good. It means that's what we want, by the way. Uh, let's see. No debris signature, so that means no confirmation of any tornadoes. And no rotation tracks. No. Good stuff. So, um, let's check real quick. All right. So basically the weather service issued the warnings because the uh, broad rotation is strengthened. So it's not tight to produce a tornado, but it could, and so therefore, um, they're going to leave that warning going. So if you live up here around Welch, you need to be in your shelters for this particular tornado warned storm. Uh, that'll be moving just probably passing the west and north side of town by about two miles, right along Highway uh, 10 and then 59. So make sure you're in your shelters if you live in that area. All right, it's in north, far northeastern Oklahoma. So that's the uh, tornado warning there. And then the one that's way out here, it's right along the border around Watts. Uh, tail end of that guy uh, does not look impressive on radar either, but uh, stay in your shelters for that one. There's a double warning for that one. Um, so just from gentry to, to 
Salem Springs to watch, just stay in your shelters until it passes you by in the next 15 minutes, and then be pressing on further into northwest Arkansas. Okay. Um, there still is a, a warning over here for southwest Missouri for Purdy, and uh, this particular, uh, we talked about this one earlier. Uh, it looks like it did have official tornado touchdown cone tornado with the debris around Stella. Remember, we mentioned Stella in its path a little while ago. Well, now it's over Wheaton, um, we're on the river, and it's 86, moving up toward Purdy. So you'd be in your shelters for Purdy, and then eventually up toward just south of Aurora uh, for that one. And uh, it's over the course of the next hour. Okay, let's go back on into Oklahoma City real quick. It just looks real linear, looks real garbage to me. When you see a storm in this um, fashion, all right, looks like this, skinny, wavy, and then over here, that is crap. That, that, that's a storm that is not gonna produce a tornado uh, at any moment, all right? It's, it, it's struggling because of the shear in the atmosphere is not what it needs to be to make it super cellular, and it's trying, but it can't. And that's totally good. Oh, that's what I'm wanting you to understand. It just means that the threat level for this is a lot lower because it can't get its act together. Um, and by the way, crap is an official scientific term. So, <laughs> just so you know. <laughs> it has multiple applications, but when it comes to storms, that's good. You want that... Um, descriptive term used <laughs> so all right so I'm looking at the uh, with the high resolution uh, terminal dot of the weather radar so it's very close it's only about 13 miles away it's sampling at about 800 feet in the air meaning if a tornado were to track it or come out of it it's gonna see it on the on the fly I mean, immediately but it's got nothing Just not impressed. It's just a garden variety thunderstorm, folks. And honestly, I wouldn't be on the air right now for this normally. Because um, it's not anywhere close to being tornadic. Let's see. Let's go back up here in northeast Oklahoma where there's actually some storms. Oh, that one's weakened too. Hmm. All right, well, let's go southwest of Oklahoma. See if this thing's still going. All right, we turn back around. We are eastbound on 37 back towards Newcastle. Gonna get to Newcastle and then see what those storms to the north do. It looks like they're gonna cross the boundary and then probably become elevated again, but we're watching that storm coming up out of Lindsay. Um, it looks like it might be in the best of Yeah, it's tough because they keep moving north. So until one of these gets rooted and then really hits that boundary hard, they're just going to keep going north and just become elevated hailers, if they even hail much at all. Um, the tail end of that, the, the boundary's lost in all the, the pop-up convection. So it's somewhere between Tuttle and, and 44, uh, between that mess. All right, anyway, where was I? I was going back to southwest Oklahoma. Okay, so back down here in uh, Granfield, Loveland area. No, there's nothing down there. All right, well, that thing's gone. So still officially looks like a warning in place, but there's 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 something, there's nothing there. So that probably, it might have been canceled and just didn't drop off the map here. Okay, so that thing's done. Um, all right, it's just thunderstorms, folks. There's absolutely nothing to worry about right now. I mean, absolutely nothing. Zero in the short term. I got to preference that short term. 
Yeah, we just crossed the boundary in between Tuttle and Newcastle. Our windows fogged up pretty bad, so we're back on the warm side, it feels like, or it looks like. Um, so we're going to do what we said, get over to Newcastle, and then reevaluate this situation with that storm down south. Actually, right now we are at 76 and Highway 37, so the boundary's laying right in here. Oh, good deal. Perfect. Hey, thanks for that. Right here. <laughs> All right, so that's where the boundary is. I'm pretty much in the middle of all this mess, and I, I couldn't find it, but hey, they drove right through it. It's a good sign when your windows fog up instantly. All right, excellent. So they're in the thick of things to watch, you know, see if one of these things kind of anchors onto it, and so far they're not, which is strange. It really is strange because the sounding showed that the atmosphere was plenty favorable for things to transpire but the winds aloft are a little weak uh, let me see what does this show 50 55 60 knots 65 knots and it cools goes back to 45 55 70 knots actually that's better than what the models forecasted it to be truth be told they had around 40 knots so hmm, that's interesting all right, we'll sit here and wait and see what happens. Hmm. There's no wind with this. There's hardly any hail with this. This is actually extremely boring. Boring is good. <laughs> I always have to say that. As a meteorologist, I'm bored out of my mind because it's just rain, man. However, I will say this, and this is what makes things quickly interesting. We got a problem here in Oklahoma City, and this is where I'm going to get serious and not goof around. It's because um, with that boundary in place, uh, it's an easy um, focus. What happens is the air lifts up. Okay, so here's your cold front. All right, let's do it this way. So air comes up and lifts over that front and then lifts and then produces all this rain. Okay. Well, the Oklahoma City is on this side of the boundary, so it's producing all this rain on top of us. It's a constant mechanism for flooding, is what I'm trying to lead to that. So that means we can end up with some real problems here in Oklahoma City as far as flash flooding goes. And believe it or not, flash flooding kills more people than any other weather-related phenomenon um, when it comes to severe weather. So we're going to be very careful um, at what happens here this evening. Um, so you do not be surprised if you live in a low-lying area especially that you're going to have to either evacuate, seek shelter, um, avoid, I don't know, because we look at rainfall totals here in a second uh, and see how much we've seen so far knowing we've probably got another two, three, maybe even three inches out of it before all this is over with this evening um, because of the proximity of that boundary. All right, so this is all a lot of green on the map. Um, let's see, my values are, oh, you know what? Hold on a second. Can I do it this way? Let me do it this way. Um, yeah, this, this, this way you guys can see this better. So we're going to do this. We'll do this and then storm total. Okay. Probe. All right, so I had, I had to change the colors over so you guys could see what I was looking at. All right, so so far we've had in Oklahoma City itself an inch and a half. Uh, let's see, an inch, inch and a half on the west side of town from Yukon to Mustang down toward Tuttle. Uh, the village, we've had some hotter spots in here up toward Arcadia. Um, so between the, the village, between 77 and 35, let's see, an inch, inch and a half. Uh, back up here to two inches, Arcadia an inch and a half, and again, two inches. So you can see how the trend has been for this to what we call train over the same area. Uh, hence, you know, hence you've got this thing kind of bordered in this one spot. That's bad news. In other words, this whole area is susceptible to flash flooding. And so we're going to start to see some green polygons. And right now we're having what we call orange polygons for the severe aspect. We're going to have green when it comes to the um, flash flooding aspect. So I just want to let you know what's happened there. 
Okay. Okay. So if those of you folks are just now kind of joining or, you know, you, your friends or relatives said, hey, come check this guy out. I want to thank you for coming by. You're watching AT's Weather. This is live through your weather coverage um, for potential tornadoes here over Oklahoma and surrounding areas. And what we've been watching to see if anything kind of gets a little serious here in Oklahoma City for right now as there is a cold front boundary stall on the south and east side of town, but all these storms have been moving north of the boundary, uh, and that means they become elevated. Elevated means that their ability to produce a tornado is, is much lower, uh, and they usually just become more of a hail, sometimes a wind maker. And so that's what we're kind of watching right now um, for the metro itself, plus a flash flood maker, as we just alluded to a moment ago. Uh, now, if you haven't done it yet, uh, try my weather app. It's called AT's Weather To Go. So it'll predict these tornadoes and give you a lot more time to prepare. Um, so when you don't have time to sit here and watch, you know, say for example, me 24 seven or whatever, uh, you'll have more time to kind of um, see how things go. And uh, it's just another tool you can use at your disposal. So it's free on Apple and Google Play. Uh, it's called AT's Weather To Go. All right, so if I recall, the boundary was at 37. What did he say? Should have put a marker on there. He said at Newcastle. Oh, he said 37.76. Okay, all right, so here's the deal. This guy down here in Bridge Creek, it's the first time I've seen a chance to where something can happen. So it does have a little inflow notch in it. It's a little kind of a little rotation signature. Now, the boundary we talked about is running something like this. So it's going to come in, in, in into this boundary zone here in just a few seconds. And we're going to see what happens with it. All right, my chasers have their page up, so let's go take a look and uh, see what that okay, looks like. We are in Newcastle. Um, we're looking back to the west-northwest. The storm just northwest of Newcastle. Uh, there is a lowering coming in, um, and our stream is up 18. Okay, we are in Newcastle. Um, we're looking back to the west northwest at the storm just northwest of Newcastle. Uh, there is a lowering coming in, um, and our stream is up 18. Okay, so um, pulling in my storm chasers. It's so hazy when we zoom in, it's hard to see, so we're battling the focus. Roger that, I've got your stream up. I can see the back end of it, um, so you're at a good spot. So they're watching the back end of this guy right uh, here, this dark area. So if there was going to be a tornado being this lowering area right here, just, just to the east of this clear slot, just to the right of the clear slot. It's kind of hard to see that he says too hazy, but um, they're in a good view to, to see as it gets closer. Okay, so while he's doing that, So the enhanced reflectivity right here, which was not there a moment ago, tells me that it is interacting with the boundary. There you go. And so now it's becoming quite intense quite rapidly. Now I need to tell you that just because it's a hook echo does not mean you get an immediate tornado. Okay, A lot of these storms will produce a hook echo, but does not mean you get a tornado out of them. 
It's just the structure that the storm takes first, and then sometimes you get the trailer to follow. All right, so they're looking pretty much due west at this uh, this area. All right, so let's go. And I'm going to split this panel so I can watch the velocity at the same time. By the way, this location, uh, just so you know, is on Fox Lane and Sarah Road. So that is where your potential developing circulation would be. In other words, your wall cloud uh, that's down low to the ground and, and what they're watching for on the stream. And so that's this area right here, this little lowering. All right. And this radar, like I said, is extremely close. It's 10 miles away, 600 feet off the ground. So the minute it produces a tornado, it's going to know it. And uh, we'll tell you exactly where and all that kind of stuff. So the warning on this particular storm that continues to move through the west side of the metro is still for one inch size hail and 60 mile per hour winds. So like I said, a garden variety, typical severe thunderstorm here in Oklahoma in the spring, nothing special, nothing fancy. What we're watching is the, the tail end of that. That's not even in a warning area right now for potential circulation development. All right, a little cell down here, Purcell. It's got a, a warning on it for inch size hail. Uh, let's see, quick track on that. So Washington, Goldsby, Noble, Norman coming in around 452, Hall Park 454, so the next half hour. So this will get stronger. It'll probably have some hail with it as it comes in your way. Uh, this one down here, Rush Springs, same thing. Garden variety, one inch size hail, 60 mile per hour winds. Uh, come out of Geronimo. So uh, looks like somebody said they thought they saw a wall cloud. You know, what they think and what's real. We'll see, but uh, that's what's going on down there. <clears throat> More heavy storms down on the Red River, but nothing else of concern. All right, so let's go back on here in the metro. Okay, this thing's already lifted. Okay, it's lifted up north. But still, nothing too crazy yet. If it goes any further north, it's going to have a tendency to get off the boundary and then it's lost its chance. Again, I have to preference that and say I'm totally fine with that. All right. But should, of course, um, if it were to anchor and, and rotate on that boundary, uh, and produce a tornado or whatever. It would move more to a um, uh, east-northeast fashion versus a north-northeast fashion. And then that would take the track through Oklahoma City, which is why it's very important we sit here and watch this very carefully. So that everybody's got plenty of time to prepare and know exactly where it is, because we won't need the whole Oklahoma County to take cover. And you won't need all of Oklahoma City to take cover. We're only gonna need a, a very thin, uh, one mile wide area, you know, give or take, along a path uh, to take shelter. That's what we can do uh, today's day and age that we could not do, you know, a decade ago. So a lot of changes have happened, and uh, meteorologists really uh, advanced for that. Okay, so let's see if anything's happened on the structure side. It's uh, still trying. It's uh, okay. So here. Okay, so here's the boundary right here, and then this is feeding into it right here. So it's still in a good position, and these guys are watching for it, and it is hazy, so it is hard to see. So they've zoomed in to this region here, and um, boy, the visibility is just terrible. 
Okay, so Web Service is going to add a possible trail development for the one near Rush Springs in McLean County. So um, let's real quick, let's go take a look. Has it popped up on the map yet? Not yet, but it's going to be for this guy down here. So around uh, south of Kreiner, uh, north of Lindsay. Flash flood warning is coming out for Western Oklahoma County. Well, we knew that was coming. Um, that's the way it goes. So, okay. All right, so it's interacting with the boundary. It has a nice, uh, strong arm appearance. So the structure of it is very good. Now we just have to kind of wait and see if it's gonna actually produce a uh, tornado. And while you watch this for a second, let me go grab something. All right. Let's see. Hmm. Okay. So um, we'll keep going back and forth to their view. So that was uh, Brandon Pendle, Pendle and uh, Chance Cauldron. And uh, they're going to be uh, keeping an eye on that particular tail end of the storm. And then we'll just kind of wait and see what it does, if anything. Hopefully nothing, of course. So Weather Service is issuing a possible tornado for the stuff coming out of Wichita Falls area. So more storms way down there, uh, eventually crossing over the Red River. So we'll deal with those once they do. Uh, right now, though, it's just a uh, severe thunderstorm warning. So uh, what, they, what they mean by that is uh, in the wording, uh, what they do is they say it's a severe thunderstorm warning, and then they'll put on there with a the caveat, but sometimes severe thunderstorms produce tornadoes without warning because of the environment that we're in. Okay, so let's go back into this guy here. It's really trying to see, is it still on the boundary? Looks like it. Uh, let me go back a few frames. Yeah, it's right on the boundary, hence this um, enhanced reflectivity beaver's tail looking notch going right in the ball. So odds are pretty good at this point in time if it's going to do it, now's the time to do it. Um, 
but looking at the video, live video of it, just not, it's just not quite there. Let's see. It's still riding right on the boundary uh, into the tail end of it, so it could still try to do something at any any moment. But you're, I mean, you're real close to it. All right. So they're gonna have to reposition. Of course, it's right behind this auto zone. Great shot there, auto zone. Can you get out of the way there for a minute? But anyway, so what they're looking at is right behind it, um, this little dark area. So when it comes to the other side, over here, I'll be able to see what's going on on the east side of auto zone. Oh, they're gonna move. Okay, well, we'll wait for them to get back into position, then we'll get back with them. But on radar reflectivity wise, even though that looks impressive, uh, the velocity is not following suit, which is the panel here on my right. So uh, again, this is your normal presentation. You normally see reflectivity, but this is a velocity uh, that coincides with that, and I don't have any couplets to write home about. Uh, and it's still barely on the boundary. It kind of goes like this and snakes out like this. And it's getting uh, awful close of getting off of it and moving too far north. So there's convergence along it, but just nothing that's um, getting into an updraft and, and spinning up. Let's see. It's pretty good winds, though, here over um, Oklahoma City, though, you know, up around 50 plus miles per hour. All right, it's it's it's. Um, Pretty good view of the walk out on our stream right now. Okay, it's pulling up. Okay, good. There it is. So again, that was Brandon Pennell, Sammy Brents, and uh, Chance Collarn, and they're out of here chasing this one lone storm, trying to do something that we really hope it doesn't. And uh, even though it looked kind of decent on reflectivity there for a while, intersecting the boundary, it just wasn't quite doing anything more. But it is moving, obviously, in Oklahoma City, so that's why we're going to sit here and just kind of watch it carefully. So you can watch these guys now on Facebook Live, and so this is I'm pulling in their Facebook Live page on uh, Twisting Fury. So you can uh, Facebook search Twisting Fury, and you'll be able to watch them um, chase storms, you know, throughout the spring season, not just today. Now it's it's lifted the it's it's gone. You see how. Um, how high base it is way up here off the off the ground. Hey, we have pretty solid uh, um, rotation on right on top of I-44 in between 149th and 134th. Unless it's above their head. How close are they? <laughs> I can't see in this view. If they're looking at this, it's too dark. You can't see that. It's too hazy. Hmm. 
Anyway, this is a clear slot that wraps around. We are directly underneath it, so you're not oh. going to be able to see it on our stream at all at the moment. Uh, there you go. That explains it. <laughs> I was like, because that's not what, that doesn't go with what he was saying. So, all right. Well, I, we'll have to tell him. Okay. Just, just point the camera straight up, I guess. Okay. So, why they do whatever it is they're doing. Um, let's take a look at this. It just, it just does not look uh, much of anything on radar, I'm afraid to say. Okay, I'm going to go up in height. It's off the boundary already. Okay, so here's the boundary right here, and then here's the cell. It's gone. It's over. It's done. It's good. No problems here for this one, Oklahoma City. Fine with me. All right, well, I'll just make sure, you know, the one of these other ones don't try to do something like that. Now, here's one around here in Tuttle, but this one's gusted out. It's got a outflow like this, so nothing's going to happen with that. These are just garden variety thunderstorms. No, no threat. Yeah, we're really considering a south blast. Um, it looks like it may be uplifted north of the boundary now. Yeah, that's just what I told everybody watching. It's, it's done. It's, it's over. So, um... I'm not sure. You can pull over somewhere you got a good high point for a view and watch radar trends and then wait to see what to jump on next. So, um, this is going to turn into a heavy rainmaker for Oklahoma City, by the way. That's all that's, all that's going to be. Not even really any hail, just heavy rainfall. So, hence the flash flooding. This is Polygon for this. Uh, so, I'll just read you the details. Flash flood warning continues for Oklahoma, Cleveland, Canadian County. Uh, indicates uh, thunderstorms producing up to an inch of rain already. And we've got more to come with this little cluster. All right, well, we talked about all that about, what, 30 minutes ago, 20 minutes ago? Uh, rainfall amounts of one to three inches are possible in the warned area. So there you go. So we'll have to deal with flash flooding looks like here over Oklahoma City um, at some point, even even um, you know potentially from this round, but more to come. If you look down southwest, we got a lot more moving in. You know, was it last night? Uh, and I started off the broadcast, and when I was talking to you, I was like, um, I was like, look, the biggest threat. For the next, uh, what I say, 36 hours, was flash flooding, and I still stick with that. Are we gonna have embedded little tornadoes here and there? Yes. Uh, embedded pockets of hail and wind? Yes. But I'm still sticking with what I said last night: uh, flash flooding event, and that's what we've got here right now. Is the tornado threat there? You bet. And that's why I'm on the air with you. Um, has it materialized? Not really. At least not over central, you know, southern Oklahoma, uh, northeast Oklahoma. Yes, earlier on. Uh, in eastern Oklahoma, so uh, there, and then we had that one storm around uh, Ada, uh, southwest of Ada, the sulfur, uh, and that uh, around lunchtime, and that was it. So we're going to see how these storms do in this environment um, as now we're getting to the peak of our afternoon. And remember, I told you also last night it was going to be an early event, you know, start early and just last all day, so we still got another six hours of this, you know. So my throat holds up. We're gonna be on the air for a while. Now I'm, I might take breaks um, to rest and just put up radar or something like that. But let's we'll let you know what the big picture is. All right, so we do have one trade warning from the National Weather Service. It's for a storm coming into Oklahoma from Texas, north of Wichita Falls. We'll take a look at that. So let's go pull that one up. I'm watching the helicopter shots of that ragged scud garbage that's not going to amount to anything here in the metro. So, okay, so down here in southwest Oklahoma, did it load up? No, it's still loading. Get her done. Okay. All right. Nothing here in Oklahoma City, the metro, to worry about at all. 
It's, it's all just heavy rain. So, like I said, the only threat for the time being is going to be flash flooding. Other than that, no hail really, um, no tornado. You're going to get some occasional, you know, wind gusts up around 50 to 60 miles per hour for sure. Um, matter of fact, I could probably show you the down, uh, down draft gust potential. Let's see if this shows up for you. So wind speeds of around uh, anywhere from, you know, 60 to anything higher. There's a lot of 50s. So there's some low 60s here in Oklahoma City. Um, so that is enough, again, to do some minor damage. That is a severe thunderstorm warning criteria out of this uh, cluster of thunderstorms. So just kind of keep that in mind. All right, so back down here in southern Oklahoma. So this is a mess from Cookie Town. Just a cluster of just nonsense. Uh, anything stands out? Cookie Town, anything with that? Not really. Okay. Uh, but then this guy down here, across the river, where I'm, in, I'm in Texas right now. It's going to be heading into Oklahoma in the next hour. It's got some good rotation with it down here. Not exactly super tight. Pretty broad. So, doubtful there's a tornado, but there is a warning for that. Okay. So, there you go. Alright, so we'll worry about that later. We got, like I said, we got about an hour before we have to deal with that one. Okay, so this is what I'm thinking about doing. I'm thinking about um, signing off and then coming back so I can rest my voice. Otherwise, I'm just going to sit here and stare at you. It would be really awkward for all of us involved. <laughs> uh, stare into my eye sockets. <laughs> So, um, yeah, let's see, look at this one again, nope, Rush Springs, nope. Hey, we're going to go ahead and make a move southbound on 35 uh, to try to get out in front of that next lead wave that's coming into that mod risk, um, try to be in position since it's still only 4.30 and we got four hours of light left. Sounds good to me. I might sign off for a while and then come back on when there's something to talk about. Okay. Alrighty. Any wall clouds down here? What does that say? Wall cloud at 21, 23. It's a long time ago. Anything on there with it? Uh, at one point, it was a little something. What'd it do? Uh, it petered out. Some noise, though. It might be buried in the noise. Let's take a look. Yeah, still buried in the noise. All right, there's a little weakness here coming into Rush Springs as far as like a um, little rotation point. Let's see if the ADAD sees it. Just not much to write on about. All right. Okay, so let me let me do this. Let me just remind you of uh, what you're going to do. So should we see a tornado here in the next few hours over, you know, from Oklahoma City southward uh, and eastward during the evening hours, everybody's game plan is the same. If you're in a mobile home, manufactured home, you're going to have to leave. Just you got no choice, you're just going to have to leave. Go somewhere else. Um, find somebody with a house, find a shelter, wherever you like to go, drive into town. I don't know. But you're going to have plenty of time to do it. You can do it right now. You know, that kind of deal. Go stay with the in-laws, whatever it may be. All right? That's step one. Step two, for those of folks, the rest of you that are in well-built, well-decent homes, you're good to go. You're going to get into the lowest floor, centermost part of the home. If it's a bathroom, if it's a closet, a bathtub, uh, jump in it, close that door, bring a mattress, put it on top of you, you know, um, if you've got kids that's got some sporting gear, pads and helmets, throw it on them. Um, the point is you want to be around uh, the 
as far away from around the outside windows and doors because uh, and walls because you don't want any debris coming in and, and hitting you because most of the injuries from a tornado is just flying debris. All right? And then after the tornado, the biggest injury is for nails, for being barefoot because you didn't wear shoes when you were um, taking shelter. So a lot of people don't have sh uh, shoes in their shelter. So that's something else you need to keep in mind. Um, you got typically a lot more time to act than you used to back in the old days. I would use every minute of that wisely. Don't procrastinate. Um, you know, it may take a while to gather those animals, especially if they don't want to go. Um, you know, it may take you a while to get outside if your shelter's outside in the uh, yard. So I mean, there's there's a lot of things you have to have in your head as far as what you want to do. Uh, and make sure everybody has a plan and they all know what to do. Take an emergency kit with you. You know, as far as anything you have to have, you can't live without. Um, you know, obviously most people have their cell phones since so they can't live without that. Uh, battery backups are really good. Those little brick uh, lithium ion batteries. Uh, grab one of those that can charge everything or even start your car. So I get one of those. You don't have it today, just get it soon. Uh, it's good to have. So, so I'm going to tell you with that. Let's see. So, Weather Service is looking at the Clay County storm. Let's go take a look at that. All right. So, Clay County is in Texas, by the way. And this is that one that had the weak rotation earlier. And it looks like it's tightened up. Oh, yeah, look at that. So we do have a tornado then with this one. So just in the last few minutes. So that's how it can go from a broad rotation and then quickly to a tornado in this environment. So this is a good test as to what happened in about five minutes. Um, there's a good rotation signature track here. It's right along the river. Uh, again, this is south of the border into Texas. And we go look at the cross correlation coefficient. This blue area represents a debris ball. So in other words, we have a tornado that's hitting something on the ground. So what is out here? Look at it. It's cutting a path through these trees. So that's what we're looking at on the radar. So this value right here, these blue, is actually trees getting picked up, and that's what the radar is seeing. Um, so there you go. So that's how we can use these dual polarization parameters to indicate you know, how strong Sometimes these um, traumatic events can be. So let's see. So it's looking at about an EF1 tornado, EF0 to EF1 uh, probability. So it's going to be on the low end. So that's good. Let's keep it on the low end. But meanwhile, there's a tornado warning officially in effect for the Clay County. So again, that'll be heading over in Oklahoma, but it's going to be about another 30 minutes. So before it crosses over Red River. But if you guys are watching from North Texas along the Red River, west of Bowyers and Petrolia. That's uh, the storm that's near you, but nowhere close to you. Like I said, it's kind of out in the middle of nowhere. Um, so that's that's the latest with that one. Uh, again, nothing else here in the body of Oklahoma, looking good. Uh, now, it looks like we have some more green polygons in Tulsa. So that's for flash flooding, by the way. Oh, you know what, let's check on that tornado warning up here in Northeast Oklahoma. We hadn't talked about that one in a while. Uh, kind of let that one slip for a minute. Sorry about that. So once this thing loads up, we'll take a look at that. Okay, so right around the town of Miami, uh, looks like we do have a report of a tornado two miles west. So that came from the public. So I'm um, not sure the accuracy of that. It's a public report. Let's see. Alright, well if it was before, it's not now. Uh, but the warning continues. 
uh, for this area northeast of Miami. So there's a storm tracker. Actually, there's several of them right there on it. And the fact that they haven't plotted any icons which says tornado or wall cloud or anything like that tells me that the thing's long, long gone. And the fact they were here this whole time means that this one report from the public, whoever that was, may be uh, inaccurate. But regardless, the tornado warning continues up here for this quadrant of northeastern Oklahoma right before it comes into Kansas in southeast Kansas. So if you're up here, um, Quapaw, it's going to be passing south of you, basically right along this little red red track, this little red line. And these points here, um, these little ticks, are in minutes. So it's 51 minutes after the hour. You know, By the time it gets to the hour itself, 5 o'clock, it's up here almost out of the state. So that's the latest with that one. Okay. Uh, let's see what else we got here in Oklahoma. Excuse me. Uh, let's see. This is just a cluster of a mess, my goodness. Still nothing embedded in it though. That's good. Alright, well it's just a cluster of heavy thunderstorms, hence the flash flood a warning in that area. All right, so for example, like on my app, like I have it set up just like you guys do, so I can pay attention to it and see how well it does. And it said, all right, danger storm approaching from my house. Well, um, the danger storm is a mixture of several things it can be. Um, so hail, lightning, flooding, damaging wind, tornado. You know, it's going to be something that's going to trigger uh, out of those categories, the algorithms in there that says, hey, it's a dangerous storm, pay attention. What you want to look forward to after that, though, is a BTI number. And here it just says a 5. So 5 says pay attention because it does have mid-level rotation in it. All right, we knew that already. Um, these storms will all have mid-level rotation in them today. So uh, now if that number were to go higher, um, then I would start getting my thoughts together of, you know, finding shelter. And sometimes it can ramp up high, you know, very quickly. And if that happens, it starts ramping up really fast, hit the deck. So if it goes from like a, you know, two to a four to a six to an eight, you might as well just go find your Freddy hole. All right. So, but anyway, like I mentioned earlier, this, this particular storm itself right now is a flash flood maker for Oklahoma City. Uh, let's see. It's got some wind in it, but nothing crazy standard 50 to 60 Okay. All righty. Listen, I got nothing for you. Right now it's flash flooding. So I'm going to rest my voice for a little bit. And I'm going to sign off on this. Um, what I made up doing is like just putting live radar up. Yeah, I think what I'll do is I'll put, I'll sign off here, and like on my YouTube channel, which goes through my app and website, I'll just have Live Radar up, and then, um, and then when I'm ready to broadcast again, I'll I'll restart it that way. Facebook will give you a new notification, and then I'll also send like another um, uh, thing to my weather app that I'm going live, because um, there's 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 no imminent threat to anything right now, so might as well just take a break. All right, so appreciate you guys watching. And like I said, it's a little different coverage than what you're used to. It's a lot more laid back, and that's very calm and soothing. You could almost fall asleep to my voice. <laughs> I 
I'm almost going to fall asleep to my voice. All right, we'll talk again soon. And uh, just be careful out there this evening. We're going to be going out and about because, like I said, uh, flash flooding is the number one killer. And with streets being flooded deep, you have no idea what's happened under them. If the water's fast moving, where you're going to go next. And that's a scary place to be. All right, we'll talk again soon.
Okay, so back again, uh, watching some storms, uh, kind of in the same area we talked about before. And those two storms had long gone and died out. Uh, but we've had uh, a new storm has kind of spawned a potential tornado. Uh, so we've got to take care of that as well. So let's go ahead and, and uh, track those until they diminish. Um, same kind of deal that they, they spin up real quick. So, okay, so again, we're in, we're in far eastern Oklahoma at this point in time. So right around the McAllister region, by the way, just so you get your bearings. So this particular uh, tornadic signature on radar has been fairly strong the last couple of scans. Uh, matter of fact, at this particular point, uh, right before I went online, uh, when I was looking at this, it, uh, what it had, uh, let's do this. It had a uh, 75 percentile ring of, a, of an EF1 tornado. So it was a very strong EF1 tornado um, signature for this one. So even stronger than the one we've had before down in southern Oklahoma. So this particular case, it's located uh, right along Highway 63. So State Highway 63, which also parallels Brushy Creek Stream, and uh, Rose, uh, I think that's Ro Ro Roseau Road. So this is going to be about uh, four miles west of Hearthshorn. So that is where this particular tornado will be. So it'll pass between uh, Alderson in Hartshorn in um, say give it about uh, 10 minutes it'll pass through on Highway 270. So that's a pretty substantial tornado at least on Doppler radar indicated but it's still up around 8,000 feet so all, our, all we're tracking is them as a cyclone we cannot actually track the tornado itself when the when the radar is closer to the radar uh, when the storm is closer to the radar we can do that but when it's this far away we're just tracking the circulation of the storm in the mid levels and we have to go based off its strength to try to guess as to whether or not a tornado is happening at the surface if we don't have any visual uh, confirmation. So a new scan came in with this one and let's see uh, what time is that? Oh, we're gonna wait, it's gonna come in right now. Uh, but this last one, uh, let's see, marker for that one still keeps it at a good strong EF1 tornado. Okay, so uh, the other one was down here, and that is going to be south of Blanco by about, uh, oh, good grief, it's probably about five miles due south right along uh, uh, Indian Nation Turnpike. So that'll be crossing over the turnpike here momentarily, uh, about five miles south of Blanco. So this is another little circulation center uh, that this particular storm has. And there was another one here uh, that looks like it's died out. So they, they, they come up pretty quick and they they kind of diminish. They're, they don't stay very long, um, which is good. So this first one kind of died out. The second one's still going down here, like I mentioned. And then this other one, this other storm, uh, that's the strongest one around Harshorn. So uh, it's also coming up probably just west of uh, Halleyville. So uh, you guys go ahead and be in your shelters for this one. This is the uh, potential traumatic sig signature coming in. It would it would uh, cross over where you have a, if you know where Peekable Creek Stream is in 270 or Bushy Creek Brushy Creek Stream. That's basically where it's going to cross over in the intersection. So we got some storm trackers right just east of that. So they're sitting on the west side watching it. So they're gonna they're gonna let us know if they see something. And then we've got some other trackers here due north of it. So not exactly the best place to be, but they're going to be able to see something, I would imagine. Uh, there's a lot of heavy rainfall, though, so he might just be driving through rain and not really know what he's driving through. Uh, so uh, just getting some word from storm trackers around Bentley, Oklahoma, earlier uh, of a potential tornado damage. So right now, the uh, only uh, storms as far as potential for a tornado is this one down here, which doesn't even actually officially have a warning on it yet. Uh, the old circulation does, but it's gone. This new one doesn't, but like I said, they've, they come up so quick, they might pull one here uh, momentarily. Uh, but meanwhile, this one lone guy here is it for now, at least officially from the Weather Service. So tornado warning for central Pittsburgh County until 11. So we're from capable of producing a trail located six miles south of Alderson, moving northeast at 50. Um, so it's radar indicated. Some of the paths, of course, McAllister, it's, it's east of you guys. Uh, but Krebs, Blocker, uh, Featherston, Bosch, uh, Hartshorn, Alderson, uh, Haleyville, and uh, Dow. 
So those are the communities involved that will be seeing the storm itself, not necessarily the actual tornado part. Uh, like I said, the tornado part is a very thin, narrow, one-mile strip, and we've got that for you here on the radar. It pretty much parallels this uh, red line you see. Uh, so it's, that's this area here, and it's going to moving north and east. Uh, so let's go ahead and do a track on that. Uh, what do we say it was northeast at 50 okay now that's got it through uh, Quentin at 1121 and Kent at 1127 that's a long ways from now you know, I'm going to redo a storm tracks. I'm not sure if that had the right speed on it, but we're going to find out. And let me flip this over so I can track the actual circulation feature. Oh, it's messy. Uh, that's real messy. So the problem is the storm is on the edge of the radar, and uh, they're having a tough time picking the right range um, to the alias the wind speeds in it so all right we're gonna go we're gonna go just west of Hartshorn by like three miles for the center basically crossing over 270 right now so that's where I'm gonna have it right here okay and then we said northeast at like 50 yeah it's cruising yeah they just issued a new warning for that so Quentin, that changes the time space just a little bit. So Quentin at 11.14, uh, Kent 11.21, Whitefield 11.29. So the new warning on this, uh, let's see. Uh, let's see, issue just a minute ago, Northeast 43, observed tornado. So they got an official confirmation, looks like, of a, of a tornado touchdown at least. Let me see what this other um, thing says here. So tornado warning for uh, south uh, western Haskell County, northwestern Latimer, eastern Pittsburgh until 11:30. Confirmed tornado three miles northwest of Hartshorn, moving northeast at 40, damaging tornado. So, remember all those storm spotters I mentioned sitting right there waiting for it. So it looks like they got uh, front and center view uh, of the uh, circulation passing by them. So this guy right here basically got run over. All right, so it's actually uh, north of them. Um, now it's about a mile north of 270. So it's in this colored area right here. Let me see if I got any debris signature. I got a lot of blue showing up, but it's not co-located, so um, it may not have hit anything substantial yet. But uh, this is where the center of circulation is, which is going to put it on Carbon Road. Uh, and south of Adamson Road and west of Jones Road. That's where that center of that tornado is located. Uh, so that'll be pressing it east of Blocker. Um, so it's going to again go between major communities, major towns. But, uh, and let's see, oh, we're going to have to switch radars because this one's getting too hard to, uh, too hard to view from. Let's try uh, this other one over here. let that load here in a second I think I'll switch this one too this should give me a little bit better view yeah okay plus we're about 2,000 feet lower so that'll help out for tracking a little bit okay so we're looking at the center of circulation this particular one is north end of Hartshorn of Hartshorn it's see it's uh, about three miles north of town downtown area uh, let's see right along the shoreline so it's going over the lake uh, and what was the, the lake in this? I know it's Pittsburgh. Um, let's see, hold on. 
I know I read it in here. Pretty sure I did. Maybe I didn't. Uh, Robbers Cave State Park. That's what it was. Okay, so anyway, so that's the location of that potential tornado. The signature of the strength of it is not nearly as strong as it was a moment ago, uh, but that's good. Um, the one we had south of there, let's see, here's, a, here's one here, but it's kind of weakened. So we only have one main one that shows up, and that's the one I just mentioned. Uh, north of town, right along the lake. Uh, let's see. Let's see if this thing popped up. Okay, good. All right, so we're gonna get that one done. Okay, so uh, let's see, what we got here. Okay, so we actually have now co-located with a trail debris signature. So this was a trail that actually, we had, it looks like two circulations. This is the second one um, that's come in, just passing on the north side, just by a mile. So this one crossed over 270 just now. Uh, so it's over 270, and it's over Dow Lake uh, Road, and one of these other roads are not in there. But, um, it's already, let's see where to go. This little batch here um, was co-located with it. So it hit at least a little bit of something. So maybe it's been some small trees. Uh, just confirmation though. But other than the storm spotters themselves that we actually did have a tornado there. All right, let's do this. Okay. All right, so this will be passing its way on the north side away um, from Haleyville uh, so that's good and again away from Hartshorn and then kind of back out in the open open area the older circulation is, is up here still going over the uh, shoreline but it's kind of falling apart uh, and this one isn't even as strong as it was either a couple frames ago so both of those have weakened so that's what's left uh, of that particular guy. Uh, down south on the line, I don't see anything else. Just a squall line. Or line actually, more of a line segment, not necessarily a squall line. It's too short for that. Sometimes we call it a leap, uh, L E W P, just a line echo wave pattern. It's a fancy term for uh, like a short mini squall line, where it's got like an area of low pressure on the north end of it can sometimes do some wind damage, kick off these little QLCS tornadoes, all that kind of stuff. Okay, so um, that's about it for this one. It, it's it, Like I said, it's um, weakening, which is good. So the circulation track, again, going over that little State Creek shoreline park thing. Which, if you look, I mean, it's over, it's over, still over land. It's interesting how the outline is for that shoreline, and it's not really a shoreline. It's just, uh, I've never been out there, so that's why I'm just like, hmm. Uh, let's see. When's the new update coming in? In just a couple seconds. All right, we'll see if it's still around, if it's moved position or what. And this is going to be it. Uh, there's no other, no other tornadoes to speak of in the state. And the way things have gone now with this line, I don't think there will be. I was actually surprised this one even happened because it wasn't uh, it wasn't the two super cells out ahead of the line that we had before. It was actually embedded in the line itself and to get a supercell embedded in the line is a lot more rare uh, especially this time of night so 
Yeah, we still have two little circulation centers, one here and one here. But they're much weaker than they were before. I know that um, I don't think there was any coverage of those storms I had earlier this evening. Um, you know, I, I was the, the one that covered those, but I do know that at some point, I don't know when, but the guys in uh, Tulsa uh, started covering these storms as they approached McAllister. So I don't know when they picked them up, but they do cover them, just so you guys do know. Because if I'm not always going to be around, um, those those guys should cover these storms down here. And when I worked at Channel 8 in Tulsa, we did. We covered, you know, south, southern and southeastern Oklahoma to a degree. I, th I think we kind of, we handed it off, you know, way down here in McCurtain County, uh, kind of in this area. We kind of let that one go uh, for the most part because there's other coverage stations down here that would cover them. But I do know that for, uh, we mostly, you know, covered at least down through McAllister. Okay. So I don't know what happened with this uh, radar site out of Fort Smith, but it's actually really delayed on that picture. And that's not helping me out. So it doesn't help me out, I can't help you out. So I think I'm going to switch to Tulsa just so I can get an update. Because it's not updating. For a reason that site's down or something. This is going to be pretty far away, but it's better than nothing. I'll see if I can't see something for you. Okay, so we're at 7,000 feet, so it wasn't too far from the other one, okay. Okay, so right now we've got uh, Circulation Center, looks like still east of Blocker. Uh, that's one. Uh, looks like, is that gonna be the main and only one? It looks, looks that way. Okay. So this radar picked it up pretty good. No debris signature with it though. So that's good. Uh, let's see, so right now it's basically just a radar indicated potential tornado because we're looking at about 6,500 feet at this point. Uh, wind speeds, should this uh, tornado do exist, by the way, around an EF1 uh, potential on this as well. So that is our one tornadic storm here in eastern Oklahoma is the only storm. So uh, this is uh, north of a town of called uh, Featherston. Doesn't show up on this map, but it's a teeny tiny spot on the map. So if you live in Featherston, you're like, oh yeah, that's us. So but it's, this thing is north of you, moving away. Okay, so what this will probably do, if it holds together, um, that's a big if, is it's going to come up on 31 here in a second. Uh, right now it's over just east of northern uh, 423 and uh, Cable Road coming up. So Cable Road and uh, 31, Highway 31. So that's where this little trail is going to cross over. 
that'll be again between Quentin and Blocker. Let me see what's out here. Uh, there are some pads for work construction. Uh, I don't see any farmhouses, so it's good. A little open area. It's a good place for it. I love this little tool, and now you can just look at what's underneath when it comes to you know what kind of populated area it's going to hit. That's that can really help you know reduce your anxiety. You know, or can heighten the seriousness of you know seeking shelter, one or the other. Okay, ballistorm is just cranking on the inflow. It's impressive. So at nighttime, you get a low-level jet that comes in, and um, like I said, with a pseudo area of low pressure kind of forming in this area you get uh, a nice inflow notch of wind that comes in, rushes in through it, and you sort of get this little cold air on the back end of it kind of a deal. So you get this um, you know, circulation pattern right here, and that maximizes the rotation, and sometimes you can get tornado signature out of that. So that's what's happening here. So here's a look at the velocity, same kind of principle. Jet rushes in like this, and then you got the other end that rushes out like so. So you get all your circulation here. So it's actually kind of a broader circulation, but when this type of pattern happens, it can tighten up on the top bowl of it in this little spot. Doesn't always last long. Um, but this one's still going. Okay, so the, uh, let's see, what is this? Sands Boy Creek Stream. So it's actually past uh, over Cable Road, still just south of 31. It took a jot more east than it has in the past. It's interesting. So with that track, it'll put it on the west side of Quentin here. Um, Let's see what time is this four or five so in about uh, two minutes three minutes it'll be on the west side I wish some of those really tiny towns would show up on here. It's probably something I can do to make that happen. All right, let me switch this one to Stigler. Okay, so um, the other thing I want to tell you is that, remember we were talking about the cold front boundary being important for these trainers to try to develop on. And Stigler right here, they have a north wind uh, from the north and west at 64 degrees. So the front, or the boundary, is probably something like this. Uh, I need to look at the bigger picture, see if I can't find some more obs but the point being is once this storm gets away from that boundary it maybe goes a little bit more north of it then the trail thread disappears so that looks like that's about to happen so they will kiss this thing goodbye once that occurs 
Yeah, because down here we got an east wind. So it's probably stuck on the boundary right now. And once it gets to Quentin, it's probably getting off of it. Yeah, actually, that's why I moved more east. I bet you it was just riding along the boundary, and that's that's why I took that job more east. So the tridal potential on this one, up around, still in EF1. Very strong EF1 at that. Let me see. No debris signature with it, though. but it's got a donut hole. You usually get a donut hole uh, when you're like in a hook echo, and that's actually where the center of the, the tornado is. This is actually a lull in reflectivity. Of where the circulation center is. Okay, so let's wait a few more minutes. Let's see if this thing uh, peters out. So if you're in Quentin, you still need to be in your shelters, by the way. Uh, the center part of your home, lowest floor, away from outdoor windows. And uh, remember, anything adequate shelter, as long as we're not talking about a mobile home, manufactured home, anything more than that um, is adequate to survive an EF0, EF1 tornado. Okay, so it is coming on on the south side of Quentin. So like I said, it kind of hugged that boundary. So it's kind of paralleling the little Sands Boys Creek stream. If I pronounced that right, probably didn't, but close enough. You know what I'm talking about. And the circulation center isn't nearly as strong as it was before. So it's basically in this section here. And you can see Quentin up here. So it'll pass south of you, uh, run along Adam Street. Could come as far north as the East Road 1310. So over here, that's basically here to here, which is a bunch of trees. Looks like there may be a, a farmhouse or two on this end. So hopefully they're in their shelters. But you can see Quentin up here, well, mostly on the north side. But still no debris signature at all. No, no lower ZDR either. So... And that's what we got going on. And uh, not that I do a lot of energy whenever we have, you know, storms. It's just at uh, 11, I'm, I'm dead. <laughs> I didn't sleep last night. I died last night in my dreams. It was weather related. Uh, I had never died in a dream before. And so... Last night I decided, hey, why not? Let's do it. So I hear that's supposed to be good. <laughs> what well, well, didn't seem good at the time. Woke up and was like, what in the world is that? So uh, it was weird. It was so weird. I mean, I remembered everything down to the details. What I said, who I was talking to, who I saw. It was just bizarre. It really freaked me out.
Anyway, so because of that, I'm exhausted. <laughs> I'm so tired. So as soon as this thing is done, I'm done. All right, so let's see. It's falling apart. Uh, the circulation center is really falling apart and it's jotted north um, on the east side of Quentin, just, just like that. So it got off the boundary and went north. That's what happened. So it's lost, it's anchored. So that's good. It means that it's, um, the circulation center is going to diminish. So you can even look at the rotation um, strength. This is the, the rotation track strength. You see the, the yellow indicates stronger uh, mesocyclone rotation. And I'm going to show you the next frame and how that goes from the yellow to a green, which means it drops down intensity. And because it had been going like this, and then with this, it means it was done. It became elevated off the boundary and it's done. So good, which you know is really good because it went right over Quentin. Um, but um, close call. I'd still stay in your shelters though for just a few minutes till this thing finishes moving out. Again, no debris signature at all, so that's good. And the rotation signature, like I said, it's going to still have some broad rotation from the structure of the storm itself. Uh, and that's still, you know, in this area here on the north side, but it's not um, like it was before. It's much weaker. Okay. So watch a couple more minutes, and then I'll turn it out. It turn it loose. Turn you loose. Turn me loose. Turn everybody loose. The trailer warning itself, I think, officially expires at 11.30. Was that it? Uh, let's see, 11... Yeah, to 11.30. Moving northeast at 60. That is moving. So, let's see here. It's just a lot of looking at radar products. That way I can tell you if there's something to be concerned about and then where to, to look and all that. Uh, I did not get to broadcast uh, closed captioning tonight, even though this, the thing at the top says so, because that's how I got it set up for all broadcasts. But I had some technical issues earlier today where the tech support decided not to work today for some reason. I guess they thought it was a holiday, so I didn't get it fixed. So tomorrow, they say. We'll see. But um, one of those things you can't control. So you gotta let it go. Okay, so in this particular case, new update came in. Um, residual circulation center is. So it's got a. It's got a name on it. It's just an unnamed road. A lot of unnamed roads over here in eastern Oklahoma. So it's on the tip of the county. Uh, this little indention here for. Um, Is that still technically, yeah, a, cur a curtain, so, um, gonna be coming into uh, Muskogee here in the county in a little bit. So the residual of it will be eventually coming up toward passing west of Whitefield, uh, what's left of it. It's, it's kind of, it's done one of these little Fujiwawas, which is wrapping back in like this. So it, it doesn't do a quite northeast track or an east track. It just kind of does a curly cue. So even the Weather Service agrees. It said the circulation north of Quentin is well organized but weaker. Um, the meso is heading deeper into the cooler air. So we talked about all that, and so they just confirmed it. So that's good because it lets you know that it, it tells you that I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> for one, I'm not blowing smoke up your behind. Um, but two, that those guys are thinking the same thing I'm thinking. So uh, that's a good sign. So there you go. All right. Uh, well, so with that in mind, then, um, I'm going to go ahead and let this go. So for the next couple of minutes, there's still a little weak circulation left that's dying out minute by minute. Uh, 
but uh, there's no indication of a tornado. I haven't seen any debris signature in a long time, so it's time to, to let this thing die. Uh, like I said, that's the only severe storm in the state is that little line segment, and uh, that's the only one that had any potential tornado uh, activity with it, and we didn't have had anything out of it confirmed in a long time. So that tells me it's time to let it go. All right. So, hey, again, thanks for watching my streaming coverage, and I, I'm going to for real sign off this time. And uh, tomorrow I do not expect to broadcast live because I don't think we're going to have a tornado threat at all here in Oklahoma. So if that were to change, obviously I, I would let you know and, and do that, but I don't think that's going to be an issue. So we'll have to wait to see for the next severe weather event. Uh, and I have not looked long term, been too focused on short term. So I might do that tomorrow, just kind of see how things are going to play out and may put a blog together or something like that. But meanwhile, you guys down there in southeast Oklahoma, you should be able to sleep a little bit better knowing that the uh, trail threat has diminished. And uh, it's just going to be some heavy rain, some flash flooding, again, for anything that continues to develop overnight. All right, you guys be careful, and we'll talk again soon. Good night, everybody.